Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today marks episode number two for our IFR training course. So if you want to know more about how to read an arrival chart, then I think you should stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. So let's dive right in here. Oh, and by the way, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to go down below and hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. If this video does help you out in any way, smash on that thumbs up button. It really helps us get found by viewers like yourself. And if you guys have any questions throughout the video, please post those down in the comments section and I will get back to you ASAP. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at this arrival procedure and we're gonna dissect this thing from top to bottom so that hopefully you're gonna have a better understanding on how to read this by the time you finish this episode. Now, firstly, we're gonna take a look at the very top and the bottom of the arrival chart and that is gonna list the ICAO of the airport and it's gonna list the arrival procedure. Second, we need to make sure that this arrival procedure that we're looking at is a valid arrival procedure. So we're going to look here on the edges or the sides of this procedure, and you're going to see it says 7 of October 2021 to 4 November 2021. So we always want to make sure we have a valid arrival chart before we try to fly it. So now that we've got those key bits of information out of the way, let's flip this thing on its side so we get a better view of what's going on here. So let's start over here at the top right, and this is gonna list all of our frequencies that we're gonna be using on this particular arrival. Next, we're gonna take a look right here in the center, and this is gonna list all of our requirements to be able to fly this particular procedure. Note, you must have radar, RNAV, DME, and this is a P-56 area. Next, we're gonna take a look down in the bottom here, and in this particular box is gonna be the written description of the approach, depending on which runway you're gonna be landing. All right, so let's take a look at this from right to left. We're gonna start at the Laughlin Waypoint. Now, if we look between Laughlin and HOTS, there's gonna be a couple bits of information here that are gonna be pretty important. Now the top number here, which says 4,000, that is the lowest, safest altitude that you would wanna fly on this particular leg of the route. Underneath of that, with the star that says 1,500, that is gonna tell us that there are ground obstacles at about 1,500 feet. Next, underneath of that, is gonna list the heading that we're gonna be on during this particular point of the leg. The very bottom number in parentheses is the number seven, and that gives us the nautical miles from Laughlin to Hots. So now let's take a look at the actual size of the lines before we go any further here. You're gonna notice that some of these are in bold and some of them are a very thin line. Now the bold lines that you see are the routes that you will be taking depending on which runway you're gonna be landing at. The thinner lines are alternate routes that you could be flying on this particular arrival. So I may not be coming in at Laughlin. I may come in right at the Sipsy transition. All right, so now that you know that, let's get back to the HOTS waypoint to the billet waypoint. Now between these two particular waypoints, you are going to see a published holding pattern. Now on this published holding pattern, it gives us a lot of information. One, it gives us the nautical mile leg for the holding pattern. It also gives us the speed requirement in parentheses in the center of this holding pattern. Next, it's gonna give us the outbound heading of the holding pattern, which is 95 degrees. The inbound to that holding pattern is gonna be your 275 degrees. We're also gonna notice the 19 in parentheses between billet and Holtz. That is the nautical mile range between Holtz and billet. So let's move on a little bit further. Between billet and Sipsy, we have some more information here. So 3000 is gonna be our lowest, safest altitude to fly. 
at 1400 feet we can expect some sort of ground obstruction we're going to be on that same heading of 275 and this is a 22 mile leg between billet and sipsy so now that we've got to the sipsy transition we now have to make our decision whether we're going to be going north or whether we're going to be going south depending on which runway that we're landing at now let's say that we're landing at runway 19 left so that means we're going to take the northerly direction and as you see between sipsy and decon there is a lowest safest altitude of 3,000 feet with ground obstructions at about 1500 feet now we're going to be going on a course heading of 328 and the range for this particular leg is eight nautical miles now as you see once we get the decon this is also another holding point but as you can see for this holding point we're not actually holding at the exact direction of the arrival procedure it's skewed off a little bit so on this holding pattern it lists a little bit more information now one it's going to list the nautical miles for this particular holding pattern two it's going to list the speed for the holding pattern in parentheses three it's going to also list your inbound and outbound headings for this particular holding pattern so the next thing you're going to notice is the waypoint icon is different than the waypoint icon at Revo. Now, the reason for that is if you have a waypoint icon such as Revo with a circle around it, that tells us that that is a flyover waypoint. Now, that must mean that there may be obstructions on either side of that. Now, if we look at the waypoint at Decon, it does not have that circle around it, and that tells it's a flyby waypoint. So we don't necessarily have to fly directly over it. So I think that's just about going to finish us up for today. If you guys have any questions, please post those down below in the comments section. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. And if this video did help you out in any way, smash on that thumbs up button. It's greatly appreciated. Well, to all my flight simmers around the world, keep the blue side up. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.